of all the people that have ever walked the earth, Jesus Christ stands out above the rest. He's written about in a number of books. He's described by historians. And God the Father Himself had planned Him before the foundation of the world. It's Jesus Christ that we want to center our thoughts around today. And matter of fact, as we all think about Jesus Christ, we all think about the cross. The time in which God came down from heaven, Jesus. He was called the Word at that time, John 1, 1 through 14. And He came down from heaven to live as us. And the book of Hebrews tells us, In all points He was tempted, yet without sin. But He goes to the cross to bear the weight for you and me. It's Jesus Christ that we need to consider this morning. And we need to consider our relationship, our common goal with Jesus Christ to see what we need to have in our lives and to see how we can make Jesus Christ the center of our lives. Let's study about Jesus Christ and look into God's Word for the truth. Within the pages of God's inspired Word, we learn the truth, which shows us the way that will lead us to heaven. The Church of Christ at East Hill invites you to study with us for the next 30 minutes a portion of the Word of God. Listen now to these encouraging words in song, and then have your Bibles ready for the lesson for today.
Thank you so much for joining us on Walking with the Word. I'm Jonathan Burns, the minister here at the East Hill Church of Christ, and it is simply our privilege to be with you every Sunday morning on the radio waves of 100.9 WKSR and to be with you on the radio with East Hill for almost 50 plus years and to be able to be with you at various times, whether it's segments throughout the week or whether it's programs like this that are full length on Sunday mornings. East Hill has a heritage of spending time on the radio waves of Giles County, and we're glad to be with you today. We're glad to be with you if you're watching us on Channel 98, the Pulaski Bible Broadcast, and we're so glad that you're able to use that channel in the PES Energized Network and to be able to have a network, a channel, that is 24 hours a day, seven days a week of Bible material. Thank you for viewing that channel and thank you for watching today. Whether you're listening on the radio, watching on television, or maybe streaming it later on the internet, we're glad and we're so honored to be able to study with you in a program that's entitled Walking with the Word. Well, last week we looked at God the Father and this week we're going to look at God the Son, Jesus Christ. And we're going to look at some attributes and some ideas about Jesus Christ and we're going to look at His ministry and see who He was and, and we're going to be able to center our minds on Jesus. But when we end today's program, this is what we have to do that's crucial. We must answer a question. Will I follow Christ or will I follow the world? One of those two is going to be true as we look through our program today. So join us today as we study about Jesus Christ and look at His history where did Jesus Christ come from? What's all this information about Jesus? What's that got to do with you and me? His history, the history. Number two, let's look at the ministry as it has to do with Jesus Christ. And let's look at the three predominant areas where Jesus Christ was and where His ministry took place. And then finally today, let's look at His doctrine. Let's look at His teaching. And let's ask this question in that point. Where did all of this come from? What was Jesus trying to do and then finally, as we conclude, we'll ask that question, will I stand for Christ or will I listen to the world that's talking so loudly? Let's begin by talking about the history. And to do so, we need to look at three passages of Scripture. Number one, 1 Peter 1, 18 and 20. Number two, Ephesians 1, 3 through 7. And number three, Galatians 4, 4. And what we're going to notice with these three passages is that Jesus Christ has always been, we talked about Him in John 1, 1 through 14. Before He came to this earth, He was the Word. And we see Him in all existence. We see Him in creation if you go and look in the book of Genesis. And you see Him with Israel in the Old Testament. You see Jesus acted before He enters the scenes of being Jesus Christ on the earth. But let's see His history. And let's start off by looking at before the world began. And notice that great power that's in His blood. And see that the time was right about Jesus Christ. Here's the first, 1 Peter 1, 18 through 20. It reads this way. For as much as ye know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversations received by the tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Ladies and gentlemen, the history of Jesus Christ. Why did He come? Because it was foreordained, it was predetermined before the foundation of the world that Jesus Christ would give His precious blood, that He would be a lamb without blemish and without spot before the foundation of the world. This is all planned for you and me. You see, we are not a people who were redeemed by corruptible things, silver and gold, material things. But we are redeemed by the very blood of Jesus Christ. And we want to see in this particular morning that it was before the foundation of the world that this was ever put into play. You think about that for just a minute. You probably, and you may be like me, I, I love to plan. And, and matter of fact, every year I try to sit down and I plan out my work schedule for the year. And I try to plan out certain things throughout the year. Now I'm not saying that my plan always comes true. But God's does. And you just imagine this for just a minute. We make all of these plans. And many times we have a hard time getting them to come true. But you see, Jesus Christ was planned about going to the cross before the foundation of the world. And think about the planning that it took place before the world began. Number two, I want you to see Ephesians 1, 3 through 7 with me to notice His blood. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ, according as He hath chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love having predestined us to the adoption 
of children by Jesus Christ Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will, to the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath accepted in the Beloved, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of His grace. You see, Ephesians 1, 3 through 7 teaches you and me that Jesus Christ had power. And His power is sought in His blood. And ladies and gentlemen, we're connected to His blood in the waters of baptism. It's what Scripture teaches us. But I want you to see verse 7 intently again. In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of His grace. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to have the forgiveness of your sins, you've got to have the covering, the washing of the blood. And that's only done by obeying the Lord. But our point here this morning is not in how one gets the forgiveness of sins. Our point is before the foundation of the world, the blood of Christ was already planned. The blood already had its power. And His history was greatly rich. You see, but what we need to recognize this morning is there used to be a time when Jesus Christ had not come. You see, we look back in history and we look back to the cross. But you've got to look at the Old Testament and think about what they were looking for. They were looking to the time when the Messiah would come. They were looking to the cross. Both of them had their advantages and disadvantages, but this is where we're at. We need to recognize there was a time when people were looking for the Messiah. And now we need to be a people who know He's been here and we need to look to be with the Messiah. His blood has the power and I need to be washed by His blood. But I need to also recognize Galatians 4.4. 4. We need to recognize the planning of God when it has to do with the history of Jesus Christ on this earth. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law. Ladies and gentlemen, when the time was right, at the fullness of time, Jesus Christ was sent to the earth. You know, God's timing is always the right timing, isn't it? You know, we've talked about this morning already about making plans, but God's timing is always right. And God knew, the Father knew when best to send Jesus Christ to the world. He knew and He tells us in His Word when He sent Him. And we understand from Galatians 4.4, 4, it was in the appropriate time. The fullness of time was made and God sent forth His Son. It was time. The history of Jesus on the earth. Now, I know just as much as you do that when you talk about Jesus Christ, there's so much more than just His history on the earth. That's when you can read passages like John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14 to see more about Him before He came to the earth. And even read 1 John chapter 1 to help us see the idea of Jesus Christ before He became flesh. But let's talk about His ministry. And to do so, I want to look at three different areas which will help us see the ministry of Jesus. And, and what I want us to focus on is what was Jesus doing in His ministry. Let's notice the Judean ministry as we start today looking at these three ministries, or these three areas of ministry. The first is the Judean ministry and some things that took place in this particular ministry was the cleansing of the temple. It was in the area of Judea of which Jesus goes into a temple and He recognizes the recklessness of man in the temple of God. He shows these signs and there's the results of these signs and finally we see in John chapter 2 we see Nicodemus the conversion of Nicodemus. And, and Jesus even being with John the Baptizer, John the Baptist, John 3, 22 through 36. And we see Jesus in the area of Samaria, which is in the area of Judea. We see Jesus going all through the land, sticking to the Father's business. Now that'll play important to us in just a bit. We see Jesus in Galilee. It was in Galilee in Matthew chapter 15, verses 29 through 39, that Jesus fed the 4,000. It was in Matthew chapter 16 and Mark 8 where Jesus talks about the leaven. It was in Matthew 17 where the transfiguration took place and this was in the area of Galilee. It was in John chapter 5 verses 17 through 47 where Jesus in the area of Galilee makes all of these claims about His Sonship. Who is Jesus Christ? He's the Son of God. The Galilean ministry, what was He about? He was about His Father's business. You see Him in Perea, the Perean ministry. You see him in John 9, 1 through 12, healing of the blind man. John 9, 13 through 34, the blind man and the Pharisees, they did not understand who Jesus was and they didn't know how to treat him, so they treated him poorly. 
the conclusion of this incident in John 9, 34 through 41, where Jesus is recognized as the Son of God. The resurrection of Lazarus in John 11 happens in the area of Perea. The supper at Bethany in John chapter 4. All of these things in this area. And these are the three great divisions of the ministry of Jesus. But what do you recognize in these? Jesus spent time in his father's business. It was the heart of his ministry. This is found in John chapter 4, looking at verse 34. Here's the verse. Jesus says, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Jesus recognized. Jesus knew what his work was. And it was to finish the work of the Father. What's that work? The Savior, the cross, the church, eternity was the ministry of Jesus. And ladies and gentlemen, many times we try as much as we can to emulate the ministry of Jesus. And we talk about passages like Luke chapter 19 verse 10. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. And we recognize with the great commission that Jesus expects us to go through the world. That was the plan to be His disciple, to go through the world and to make other disciples also after Jesus Christ, not after me and you. You see, our work is the same as Jesus. It was to finish the work of the Father, to do the will of the Father. And that's who Jesus was. Jesus was one who was obedient to the Father. And thus Hebrews 5, 8, 9 comes to my mind at this time. Though He were a son, yet He learned obedience by the things which He suffered and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. The ministry of Jesus, it was about fulfilling the will and the work of the Father. Not only that, we need to recognize Jesus Christ in his doctrine. In his doctrine. Now there are three areas that we're going to know. Number one is Father's business. We've already alluded to that today. We're going to look at John chapter 14 and look at verse 6. And we're going to look at a point that we've entitled, Thee Today. And we need to recognize something from John 14, 6 that has to do with right now, and it always will. And then we need to see John chapter 14, 16, and verse 26, and notice the comforter. And then we'll ask this question, who are we going to follow today? Here's the first thing. Look at Luke 2, 49. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business it was Jesus here in Luke chapter 2. His parents had went to offer sacrifices to God and they were in the company of a lot of other folks that they knew. If you go and read Luke chapter 2, you'll see this. And Jesus stays behind and, and they had gotten a few days journey away and they recognized Jesus wasn't there. So they go back and they find Him in the synagogues teaching. And this is His response to them. How is it that you sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my Father's business. It was Jesus who taught us in His early ages that he was going to be about his father's business. and That's where I want us to ask this question. and I, it, It's extremely important for us when we're looking at Jesus Christ because we want to be like Jesus Christ. We want to be in Jesus Christ. And if I answer this incorrectly, I won't be with Jesus Christ or in him. Here's the question. Do you want to finish and accomplish the father's business? Maybe we should ask it this way. Do you want to be about the father's business? You see, if I'm going to be about the Father's business, I'm going to be about the business of Jesus Christ, and that means I need to recognize something about the today. There's a rule that should stick into our minds, and it's about today. And here it is in John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. How can one go to heaven? I've got to go through the way. I've got to go through the truth, and I've got to go through the life. What is that? That is Jesus Christ. Now that's important to you and me because there's something I say on this program quite often, and I'm going to repeat it today because I mean it just as much today as I have in the past and as I will in the future. Don't listen to Jonathan Burns. Listen to the Lord because that's what matters. He's the way. I'm not. He's the truth. I'm not. He's the life. I'm not. I'm just like you. I'm trying to live in the way. I'm trying to live after the truth. I'm trying to live after the life. I'm trying to be with Jesus Christ. And we need to recognize that it's not through man that decisions when it comes to religious nature are made. It's through the Word of God. It's through Jesus Christ. Now you may be sitting there saying, well, how do you say it's through the Word? 
Well, I want you to see something about Jesus and what He said to His disciples, what He said to the apostles, and how we can know that the Word is from Him, how we can know that it's His words that we're looking at after we no longer read them inside of red. Here it is in John chapter 14, verse 16 and verse 26. We'll read the two passages and then we'll talk about them collectively. John 14, 16. And I will pray the Father and He shall give you another Comforter that He may abide with you forever. But the Comforter which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Jesus is telling His disciples, I'm going away. Basically, here's what He's telling them, I'm going to the cross. He said, but don't worry. Well, this is what John chapter 14 is. It's, it's the don't worry chapter. He says, don't worry, I'm going to send a comforter to you. I'm going to send something that's going to make things easier where you can, you, you can, ha you can relax on these things. Even though I'm not going to be there, there's going to be this comforter there and He's going to give you comfort inside of my words. He says, I'll pray the Father. Remember Jesus? I'll be about my Father's business. Look at Him here in John 14, 16. I'll pray the Father and He'll give you another comforter that He may abide with you forever, the Holy Spirit. And the question becomes, what does the Spirit teach? And that's John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. When you read the inspired text of the Bible, you're reading about what Jesus wants. You're reading about His doctrine. You're reading about His teachings. And ladies and gentlemen, let us always recognize that everything Jesus said is backed up by what He sent through the Comforter. He says, I'll pray the Father, He'll send you the Comforter, and He'll bring you into remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. How many words, Jesus, are they going to be reminded of? All the words, everything I've said unto them. Well, what are they going to be reminded of? Everything I've said to them. That's a beautiful nature. So when we read about the New Testament church, we're reading about Jesus' promise to build His church. When we read about marriage and the sanctity of marriage, we're reading about Jesus. And Jesus did teach about marriage in the book of Matthew on several occasions. Jesus taught that marriage was with a man and woman. So does all of Scripture. That's not changed. Jesus teaches that life has to be recognized as sacred. That's not changed. Nothing is different there. The things that Jesus taught are resounded out from the book of Acts onward to the book of Revelation because that comes from the Holy Spirit which was sent to them to guide them, to lead them, to bring them into remembrance, to teach them all things. What type of things? Whatsoever I have said unto you. Oh, we now start to see a bigger picture here, don't we? Because you recognize something. There are people in this world who say certain things. What we've noticed is the Father's business. We've noticed that today, that's today, Jesus, the way, the truth, and life. We've noticed the Comforter and what He was going to do and what He was going to teach. It was everything that Jesus taught. But what we need to recognize, and you know this as, as much as I do, the world is stifled with religious division. This church says one thing. This church says another. One man says this. One man says this. Who's right? We all have our way, people will say. We're all just trying to get to heaven on the many paths. Is that true? I don't ask that to be right. I ask that because I want to go to heaven. And ladies and gentlemen, if I'm wrong, I hope you help me go to heaven. Do you want to go to heaven? I do. That should be all of our goals. My two boys... There's nothing I want more in this life than for them to go to heaven. But here's what I know. I've got to obey the Word. But I also know that there are so many people in this world who are saying different things that are contrary to God's Word. Matter of fact, one thing recently happened in this community, and, and, and I'm going to quote it. I'm not going to say who it was. I, I'm not into that game. But listen to this quote. One man said, We must find common ground in Christ and apply your faith to change the world for better. Hmm. It was talking about the inclusive nature of bringing the LGBTQ community into the worship assemblies, into colleges, into all accepting areas of life. In other words, saying what Jesus said, don't worry about that, but we've got to be inclusive. 
That's what we've got to do. We've got to change. We've got to find common ground and change the world for better. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I cannot change the world for better if I am not living for Christ. Because here's the deal. It cannot be. We need to be reminded that the common ground is found in Christ by changing your life for Him. Not by redefining sin to make everyone included in Christ without change. Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, Except ye change, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Change! Not change God's Word. You see, the Bible, the Bible is God's Word. It's not mine, it's not yours. It's inspired of God. And the Comforter came to tell the disciples and the apostles what they needed to know. And it was all about Jesus' teaching. Whatsoever I have commanded you, whatsoever I have taught you. I cannot tell the world, oh, you just come be a part of the church and you live in your sin. We won't call it sin anymore. I can't do that. It cannot be. Because there is true common ground. And the reality is true common ground can only be found inside of Christ. It will never be found in the opinions of man. And thus I tell you again today, don't you listen to Jonathan, you listen to the Lord. It's His Word that matters. It's His authority that reigns true. It's Jesus Christ that's the standard. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, Jesus said. It's not by the words of Jonathan. It's not by the words of the preacher. It's not by the words of the religious leader. It's not by the words of a president. It's by the words and instruction of Christ in which we can learn what we need to do. And Jesus told His disciples, the apostles, that He'll send the Comforter, they'll remind them, and they'll tell them everything that He's already told them. True common ground can be found inside of Jesus Christ. It has to do with His history. Not just before he became, but on the earth. It has to do with his ministry. What did he do here? He followed the Father's business. It had to do with his doctrine. What did he teach? It's Jesus Christ that we need to be concerned about. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to encourage you to do something. I want you to take your Bibles today, because that's what truly matters. And I want you to go to wherever you're going to worship. And I want you to open that Bible. And I want you to see if that Bible matches what's happening in the assembly you're at. I'm not saying, I'm not saying you go in there and create a ruckus. But I'm saying you open up God's Word and you see the words of Jesus Christ. Because ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be judged by the words of Jesus Christ. That's what truly matters. The words of Jonathan do not, but the words of Jesus Christ, they really, truly matter. Where's your faith? Is it in the faith of men? Do you listen to their teachings more than Christ? Your faith must truly be rooted in Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us today for our study. If you have questions or comments, feel free to contact us at Post Office Box 329, Pulaski, Tennessee, 38478, or call 363-2777. We hope you will be with us again next Sunday at this same time. And we would be honored to have you in Bible classes at the East Hill Church beginning this morning at 9.30. Worship will follow at 10.30. We hope to see you then.